Discussing sources for historical events is not only important, but can also be really interesting, as we will show in this video. When we talk about historic wars and conflicts, we have to remember that history writing can only paint an approximate picture of the actual turn of events, as the past can never be brought to life with absolute accuracy. In the case of the Punic Wars, on which we made a couple of videos recently, that past is over 2000 years ago. So it is even more difficult to verify and properly understand the primary sources we have of these wars. There is one primary source in particular that tells us the story of the Punic Wars, and that is a work called The Histories by the ancient Greek historian Polybius. Polybius was from the Greek city of Megalopolis on the Peloponnese, but was taken as a hostage to Rome after the Roman victory in the Third Macedonian War. There, he began to write an account of the rise of Rome as a great power. Polybius' histories were originally made up of 40 volumes, only the first five of which still exist in their entirety. The bulk of the work was kept in the libraries of the Byzantine Empire, and only after the fall of Constantinople and the introduction of the printing press, it was translated into other languages and was spread around Europe. The first English translation was published in 1568. Polybius was actually present at the final fall of Carthage, which we discussed in our previous video, as he had joined Scipio's army as an observer during the Third Punic War. Of course, he could not have been present at the First and Second Punic Wars. In fact, he was born in 200 BC, one year after the end of the Second Punic War. However, while there have been debates about the reliability of Polybius' histories in the past, the modern historiographic consensus is to accept Polybius' account, as he drew his information from ancient sources that are now lost, including the sources he had access to when he was in Carthage shortly before its destruction. He also reports the events in quite a neutral way, not favoring any civilization over the others. Other, later accounts of the war exist, but only in fragmentary or summary form. There are some contemporary Roman historians writing about the wars, but modern historians and classicists clearly find Polybius more reliable. As the classicist Adrian Goldsworthy claims, Polybius' account is usually to be preferred when it differs with any of our other accounts. So we have, in modern historiography, a clearly preferred written source on the war. However, when we analyze ancient history, we rely on a mixture of contemporary sources and archaeology, with the latter having to confirm the former. This is why we have put together five archaeological findings or debates on the Punic Wars that give more concrete evidence of how they went down and how significant they were at the time. Number 1. The Battle of the Agate Islands As you might remember, this was the big and decisive naval battle, bringing the First Punic War to an end in 241 BC, when the new Roman fleet finally destroyed the Carthaginian fleet off the coast of western Sicily. Polybius gave a reasonably precise location for this battle, putting it near the Agate or Agadian islands of Favignana, Maritimo and Levanzo. Starting in 2010, a team of marine archaeologists from the United States and Italy were operating from a state-of-the-art research vessel to find evidence for Polybius' narrative. And they actually found it. 19 bronze warship rams, 10 bronze helmets and hundreds of amphorae have been located so far. It was actually the first time archaeologists have gone looking for and successfully uncovered evidence of a particular ancient naval battle. Number 2. Hannibal's crossing of the Alps Probably the most obvious choice to cross the Alps from France to Italy in the 3rd century BC would have been Little St. Bernard's Pass. Its saddle lies at just 2188 meters above sea level and there is evidence of travelers crossing it from as early as 750 BC. The problem is just that Polybius tells this story of Carthaginian veterans of the Second Punic War claiming that at the start of the descent Hannibal assembled them 
and declared to them that the end of their campaign was drawing near, as he pointed to the view of Italy, showing his soldiers the Po Valley and the plains near it. And from Little St. Bernard's Pass you cannot see the Po Valley at all. So it was first suggested in the 1950s by Gavin de Beer that the actual pass could have been the Col de la Traversette. As this pass is a lot more difficult and higher, at 2,947 meters above sea level, this theory was initially quite contested. However, in 2016, geologists reported that sections had been identified near the Col de la Traversette that suggested the movement of thousands of animals and humans dated to approximately 218 BC, the time of Hannibal's invasion. Unfortunately, this still does not prove that this was the way that Hannibal's army used, as the geologists could not give a precise date for this movement. But it still shows how large quantities of people at that time were in fact able to cross even this difficult pass. Number 3. The Battle of Carthage Although the Romans completely destroyed Carthage in 146 BC, the ruins of the ancient city remain at the outskirts of Tunis to this day. You can still identify the mercantile and the military harbour used by the seafaring Carthaginians. There is also still evidence of the human disaster that this battle constituted. In the Tunisian Carthage National Museum you can see spears, swords and stone catapults from the battle. They even display a skeleton of one of the Carthaginian fighters who died violently in the battle. Number 4. The Battle of Bay Kula this battle of the Second Punic War was fought in the Iberian War Theatre between Scipio Africanus and Hasdrubal Barca in 208 BC. As the Andalusian Centre for Iberian Archaeology reported in 2009, they could confirm the site that Polybius gives in his history for this battle. In particular, they found evidence of a Roman camp, newly discovering Roman pottery and coins near the Spanish town of Santo Tomé as well as arrowheads and sling bullets indicating a battle. It was after this battle that Hasdrubal Barca finally decided to give up Carthaginian Iberia and moved his army to Italy to help his brother Hannibal. Number 5. The role of Spanish silver after the Second Punic War. Our last example is a long-term one, which I think makes it especially interesting. Researchers have been actually able to scientifically verify the important role of Spanish silver for Rome's economy after the Second Punic War. In a study of ancient Roman silver coins from 310 BC to 101 BC, they discovered differences in the isotopic constitution between the coins from before 209 BC and after 209 BC. The isotopic constitution in the later coins corresponds to metal deposits in southeastern Spain, whereas those of earlier coins derive from the same sources of coinage found in Greek cities in Sicily and Italy at the time. This shows just how omnipresent Spanish silver was after the Second Punic War and how important it was to the rise of Rome. The degree to which Rome benefited economically from the victory in the Second Punic War was until now just speculation but now the chemistry confirms it. So we can see from that example that winning the Punic Wars massively boosted Rome not only from a geopolitical perspective, but also from an economic and financial one. Summing up, all these examples give a pretty good indication of why Polybius is so popular with historians nowadays. We have been able to verify many of his claims archaeologically, which I think is pretty amazing. We have Polybius to thank for the fact that although these wars happened more than 2000 years ago, we can still paint a pretty decent picture of them. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this background info on the Punic War sources as much as we did researching it. For more history and historiography content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Until next time, and goodbye.